Next is remembering how to do area of triangles. And this formula, which you guys should have seen, but is a half base times height. Um, it's just important to recall that there are different types of triangles. In a right triangle, the side lengths are the base and the height. In an obtuse triangle, we are given the base, but the height is actually drawn outside of the triangle. Because again, it has to be where they meet at a right angle. In an isosceles triangle, we need to remember that the altitude splits the base in half and that is our height. So we just need to remember what types of triangles we are talking about and how to apply our prior knowledge of those triangles. In a triangle like this, which is an obtuse triangle here, I don't have the base or the height. But the fact that it is a 30 degree angle helps me because I can look at the triangle that involves the altitude, the height. So if across from 90 is 12, remembering that's a 30, so that would be a, a root three and two a. My two a value is 12, which means my a value is going to be six. So that tells me that my height is six, and this entire side is six root three. Now in order to find the area of the orange triangle, I need to take the dimensions of the orange triangle. So the orange triangle has a base of six root three minus two, because it's just this little part over there and then a height of six. So I'm gonna get 18 root three minus six. On an isosceles triangle, and it might be easier for you to look at it where the base is on the bottom. Some people visually like that better. Drawing in the height. Remembering that it splits it up in half, three and three. Now I'm looking for the height. If we recall our Pythagorean theorem, we can solve for the height then because three squared plus eight squared is equal to eight squared. and I find out that my height is the square root of 55. So now finding the area is one half of base times height. My base, oops, is six, and my height is root 55, which simplifies to three square root 55. Another type of triangle that you could have is an equilateral triangle. There are multiple ways to do an equilateral triangle. One way is very similar to the um, isosceles, but when you draw the altitude, it splits that in half and in half. And then remembering that this is a 60 degree angle. So on each side, we have our 30, 60, 90 triangles, which tells me that my altitude is 2 root 3. So a base of four, an altitude or height of two root three. It tells me that my area is four root three. Now, there is a special formula for equilateral triangle. You don't have to use this. You could do it the way we just did it. But an equilateral triangle only, the area is equal to the side squared times the square root of three over four. So... Because all of our side lengths are 4, we could have done 4 squared times root 3 over 4. And when we do 4 squared, we get 16. Divide that by 4. And again, we still get 4 root 3. 
So there are multiple ways to do um, the area of an equilateral triangle. In this case, for a shaded region, we have a big right triangle. And then we need to take away that right triangle, that rectangle, and that right triangle. So when we look at the big right triangle, we have 1 half base of 18, height of 13, which gives us 117. Subtract this triangle, which is 1 half of 6 times 8. We're going to subtract this rectangle, which is 5 times 6. And then we are going to subtract this right triangle, which is a 12 as the base, height of 5. So we're going to subtract 24 and 30 and 30, which gives us 33 units squared for that triangle. There are two more uh, special cases of triangles that we can have, and we're going to use Hero's formula for one of them. Hero's formula is the area of a triangle when given all three sides of the triangle. So first off, write down the formula. And then when you're doing this, the S stands for semi-perimeter or half of the perimeter. And then A, B, and C are the side lengths. So for this first one here, first up, add up all of the sides. And we find out that the perimeter would be equal to 30 which means that the semi-perimeter would be 15. So then plugging this into my formula, area is equal to the square root of S, which I just found is 15. And then take my semi-perimeter and subtract it from all of its side lengths. So first off, 15 minus 7, 8, 15 minus 10, 5, and then 15 minus 13, 2. When I multiply all of those together, I'm going to get the square root of 1,200, which means I need to simplify that. And so I'm going to get 20 root 3. And then the last one is another formula, and we are going to use for a triangle when you are given side, angle, and a side. Now I know there's a lot of formulas, but you get to use all of these formulas. You just need to know how to obviously apply them. So A and B are side lengths, and C means that it's the angle in between. So if you are given side A, side B, and angle C. So for number 12, first off, side A is opposite angle A, so that's 12. Side B, opposite angle B, which is 18. And the measure of angle C, which is 63 degrees. And then all you have to do is plug it into this formula, which is 1 half of 12 times 18 times the sine of 63. And you type all of that in, and that is your area for uh, your triangle. 
So just remembering some different things. Summarize your formulas. You could have side squared or base times height. Both of those are base times height. For an equilateral triangle, you could have all of the triangle formulas. Also, side squared root 3 over 4. And then for a triangle, you have 1 half AB sine C, the one we just did. 1 half of base times height. And then also Hero's formula. You would just need to know when to use which formula based on the information that you have in the... Uh, diagram. So a lot of this was review going over um, parallelograms and, and rectangles and uh, squares and some triangles, but we added a couple of new formulas to c cover uh, finding the area of all of those different shapes.